Hey guys, DX here. I recently attended an awesome gathering that happened this weekend. It was at the Oklahoma State Fair. It was uh, the Retro BitCon, or Super BitCon. I call it Retro, don't know why. Well, it's a retro gaming, I guess, gathering. So yeah, I attended there with my wife and uh, a couple few friends. Um, it was great. We had a good time. Met a couple people. Uh, and one guy, I will not mention his name, but the other guy, he's actually pretty popular on YouTube. Um, does the name Alpha Omega soon have any kind of meaning to you guys? I met him, and he is an astounding human being. He's very funny to talk to. He's down to earth, very passionate about gaming, and just shooting the shit. He's cool like that, and you can just go up to him and talk to him about anything, and, and it's gravy. I had a great time talking with him, and it was like being... I felt starstruck <laughs> when, I, when I met him, so much like if any of you would meet me, I'm pretty sure maybe part of you would be starstruck. It's kind of like that. You're used to seeing someone on camera thing, but you haven't, you never saw him face to face, you know, that feeling. So it was cool meeting him, and he's an awesome guy, and I recommend you check his channel out. He has a lot of rants on video games, uh, news, ba video game based news, to, uh, and he rants, and, and he does a good job of it, too. Uh, collaborates very smoothly and calmly in the situation and situations that he talks about. And he's a really awesome guy. Um, I, I really enjoyed meeting him. So I will post a picture of that at the end of this video for you all to see. So what did I do at Retro Big Town? Well, I played some of the uh, free, ar free arcade games that they had up there. I was disappointed with that, though, because they barely had anything that was noteworthy except maybe Donkey Kong um, and the console games that you could play with other people. It wasn't as, I don't know, it just didn't have the key ingredients of an arcade. If you had the second Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter II Championship Edition, uh, Final Fight, you know, just games that we knew as growing up, it would have been a bit more arcade-ish. Uh, something that I would be interested in, uh, personally. But other people, it may have been different, and they may have been like, oh, man, it was great and cool, but personally, I didn't care for it. Um, also, I want to uh, go ahead and note that it's the 3rd of April, at the time of making this video. My birthday is approximately 21 days from now. On my birthday, I'm retiring this for the summer because the summers down here are way too hot. I'm in the process of moving again, so I do not want in any way have this to, to affect the overall comfort of the heat that I will experience while moving. Some of you who may have beards may know what I'm talking about. When you sweat, you get sweat all in your beard, all in your shirt, and you get greasy. It's fucking nasty. So, I'm getting rid of that this on my birthday. But on my birthday, I also play through Blaster Master. Um, I will be doing that actually twice. Um, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, I won't mention his name on camera, has asked me to... Uh, through emulation, of course, because I don't have any kind of capture equipment and don't know how to use capture equipment because I'm kind of, you know, retarded, um, to go ahead and record my playthrough of Blaster Master. Now, i got to do it twice. I'm going to play through it once with the cartridge, and then I'll play it again through emulation. It doesn't take me long to beat Blaster Master. It takes anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes at maximum. So, that'll be exciting to do. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go show my purchases that I made at RetroPicon. I spent a total of $100, and I must have to, I have to state this on camera. Retro gaming is becoming a ridiculous hobby in terms of price. Uh, I'm not at all happy with the prices that to buy games for. I mean, five years ago, I could buy like, like 40 deck games with $100 or more depending on where you look. And you can still find good deals online only. 
a lot of these vendors that you go to, like say Retro BitCon or, or Super BitCon, sorry, uh, or Retro Game Conventions, they cost a little bit more, maybe a lot more. Uh, one of the, I was told by one of the guys that uh, the platform that is showing most of an increase in prices is the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, the 16-bit era. Um, no one knows why that is. I guess some people, the younger generation especially, are starting to understand, you know, there are other types of games out there other than what they're used to and they're actually liking it more so they're going to spend money or have people spend money on those games to play or yeah those assholes that just buy the collect and not play I hate those motherfuckers because why are you going to keep a piece of software that um, that you're just going to collect to look at I mean that makes no fucking sense I collect games to play which every gamer should be not just to collect, just to look at. Like, there's probably some cocksucker out there that bought Little Samson or Earthbound and bought, like, spent a lot of money and just put it, like, in a glass frame and hung on the wall. Are you going to play it? Probably not. I don't care for Earthbound. Little Samson is a decent game at best. It's not great, but it's up to me. I wouldn't spend the asking price on it, though. I would bet, rather prefer spending $40 on a red production card. Anyways, I think I'm going to show my purchases now. <laughs> I bought six titles. Some are boxed, some are not. Um, some are complete, some are not. Uh, some of them are questionable, some are not. <laughs> uh, I can go on about that, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show my purchases. And I'll try to give you a brief description of what the game entails as I show it off on camera. Anyways, here's game number one, Battletoads. Now, most of you don't need an extra introduction of Battletoads. It's a side scroll fighting game that pissed a lot of people off during 1991. And you had this level 3 speed bikes. I don't need to go any further than that. But for some of you who never played Battletoads, it's a side scroll beat em up in the vein of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, except it's a hell of a lot harder. And you'll rip your hair out, and it causes much rage quit. But it's a fantastic game made by Rareware, uh, published by Trade West, and it was an amazing game then, and it's still an amazing game now. So I'm happy to own an actual card of it. Uh, so my brother, fuck you, I have my own copy, go suck a dick. Next game. This is an arcade port of a semi-famous Capcom game. It was on one of the classic game collections that was on the PS2 or Xbox, the Capcom Classic Collection. I want to say one, but it could have been two. I don't know, look it up. I don't really feel like posting an annotation on it. Anyways, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is a western shooter where you basically, it's a vertical shoot em up You walk upwards and you shoot left, right, and straight have to find a warrant somewhere in the battlefield in order to fight the boss, otherwise the screen keeps looping. Or eventually, if you can't find the warrant, you can gain enough gold and you can buy a warrant and then fight the boss. Either way, it's great. The game gets relatively difficult near the end. I got to Death Mountain. I know, rip off Zelda much. <laughs> uh, and I kept dying and dying and dying. It really, it's really tough, but very awesome game. Uh, I suggest to anyone who likes Capcom arcade ports like myself. Um, it's not arcade perfect, mind you, but it is. It's good. It's playable and a lot of fun. I also wanted to get 1943, but I just didn't have the money because there's a couple other games I bought that I wanted to get. So 1943 will be owned by me sometime in the near future. Anyways, the next game is a Zelda clone. It's a overhead hack and slash, and this is based off a uh, 80s movie that I loved and still love to this day. Uh, also, it's well, it's actually it seems to be sealed. I don't think it's ever been opened. The box is a little bent to go. It's also made by Capcom. Anyways, let me go ahead and show the fact that it is sealed. Willow. As you can see, it's sealed. Uh, it's got the plastic wrapping on it. I haven't opened it yet. 
but um, I plan to. And I got a cat right here who is interesting in what I'm showing off here. You gonna be a retro gamer? Can you please get out of the front of the camera, please? Now she's smelling things. It's my, it's my, it's my, it's mousy. Hey, mousy. Okay, I'll put her down now. <laughs> okay. That's a, basically, it's a Zelda clone. It's a hack slash talk to people. It's pretty good. It's a little on the hard side, though. Uh, but nothing compared to this next game. I got a lot of hard games, I noticed. But it's just, it's that part of, you know, retro game collecting, you know. You get some easy games, you get some hard games. But hard games equal challenge, equals replayability, etc. This one, some of you may have rage quit issues with as well. It did with me, and that's why I bought it, because I want to conquer this motherfucker one day. Eight eyes. Bootleg Castlevania. That's all I gotta say. You're basically a guy named Orin, and you stab um, as your attack. It's very short range. It's fucking bullshit. But you have a bird named uh, Curtis, who's really helpful, actually. You can actually use him to spam enemies, but it, you can't get too far with that. You have to beat the game three, or is it five? Three or five times. It's a, it's a good game, but really hard. I look forward to playing it. I'll have to definitely get some beer that night, or some kind of liquor, and try against my wits. Hopefully I won't pass out from drunken rage quit <laughs> while uh, playing the game. And then the last two games I have are Super NES titles, not in box, not very popular or common, but I like these games, and uh, that's why I purchased them, obviously. Anyways, the first one is Congo's Paper, which on Wikipedia is said to be the true sequel to Joe and Mac. I don't believe that. Wikipedia is a bunch of lying sacks of shit. People just like, oh, well, it says it on this website, so it must be, it must be true. It isn't. On uh, Wikipedia... While some people actually work hard to get the real facts to put on the page, most of the stuff is bullard. Because anyone, any jerk off can go on the site and say, hey, um, like, okay, for instance, they had a article on King of Fighters 99, or Dream Match 99, which is King of Fighters 98. Anyways, it said somewhere, I don't know if they changed it because I haven't looked in the article in years, uh, when Wikipedia started, it said that, that there was a severed gain its head on Google's stage, the final stage, in, I think it was Dream Match or 98, which is basically the same game, just one of them has 3D polygonic backgrounds, and the other one has sprite-based backgrounds. i never seen a severed gain its head. So, fail. That's all I gotta say. When it comes to Wikipedia, I don't, that's not a very good site for information. However, sometimes you will find information that you are needing to needing to know, which is excellent. But just take everything you read on there for, with a grain of salt. And the last game, but certainly not the least, is the closest that you can find of an SNK fighting game for the Super Nintendo. It feels like a King of Fighters game. Single player, mind you. A power instinct. In fact, there was a Power Instinct game for the Neo Geo. Uh, Matra Melee, I think it was called. Uh, there was also... Uh, there was, I think, three Power Instinct games in total. Uh, a lot of characters are questionable design, but the fighting engine is really fun, and Atlas did an excellent job, I think, with the game. It's a lot better than Fighter's History by Bad East. That game was, that was terrible. I mean, yeah, it's a, kind of like a Street Fighter clone, but the thing about Power Instinct that, that is different is you can knock barriers. Um, it was one of the first games that you can knock barriers um, in, in the stages to make the stage longer, bigger. And there's also a real diverse amount of fighting moves, or special moves within each character. As a matter of fact, there's a character in the game called Keith Wayne, who is actually a badass and has a lot of useful moves that can make the game easy. The negative, there's two negative points to the game. Though. The music is atrocious, and there's no endings. Something Virtual Fighter needs to fix as well, because that, I won't go into detail on that. Um, so, 
Well, that's about it, guys. Uh, I had a really good time at Super Bitcoin. We didn't stay as long as I'd like because, well, we had some friends that wanted to hang out afterwards. Uh, they went to Bitcoin with us and wanted to drink some beer. They wanted to play League of Legends. You know, I, my friend, uh, my one of my friends uh, played Diablo 3, The Reaper Souls, which I've been playing a lot of and I really like. Um, I'm stuck right now. <laughs> I'm stuck at the part where I don't know who plays Diablo 3 that watch my videos, but um, there's a part where a battery ram hits inside Pandemonium, and my Demon Hunter was a kick-ass Demon Hunter. Now he's weak as balls, and he, the loot in Pandemonium is bullshit. Uh, I'm trying very hard to find the best equipment to use for that particular part, because I keep getting my ass kicked. I know, it's balls, but I'll, I'll, I'll beat it eventually. I, I'm Right now, I'm just grinding and gaining Paragon uh, for my Demon Hunter. I got a Demon Hunter, a Barbarian, and a Wizard, and I'll be starting a Crusader very soon. So, I'm enjoying Reaper Souls very much, though, so, and, and uh, that's about it. Now, I noticed some people have been trying to write me and asking me about my about my battle tag at Battle.net. Truth is the matter, I don't play with people that I don't know. If I don't know you, I won't add you. All the people that are on my Diablo friends list are all from personal experiences and things that we, we play together. A lot of friends from Michigan. Matter of fact, I'm in the clan uh, with, with, that was made by a couple friends from Michigan. Uh, so, if I don't know you, I won't add you. It's just the way it is, guys. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You probably didn't. It was just me rambling. But Super Bitcoin was awesome. If they have it again next year, I'm going to try very hard to stay longer. You know, uh, I'm in the process of moving again, so it's, uh, you know, I'll try to make videos, but uh, I know I've been making a lot of vlogs, vlogs lately because I know you guys miss those. They're not like they were, but hey, it's something, I guess. I don't really care for views. You know, I'm not. I'm not a view whore. You either watch my shit or you don't. I really don't care either way. Anyways, uh, I hope you all have a good evening now and take good care of yourselves. Stay cool. Stay warm. Stay comfortable and stay classic, of course. All right, take care, guys. And here comes a uh, shot of me and Omega. Soon.